Good evening, if you'll join me for opening prayer. Dear Father God, Lord, we love you with all our hearts. We thank you for giving us the gift of your word so that we may grow and be more like you. Lord, we love you. We ask for your guidance, your wisdom, and your strength. In your name we pray, amen. Our scripture today is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Every writing is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for conviction, for setting a right, for instruction that is in righteousness. Throughout this chapter in 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul is instructing his young apprentice, Timothy. He's instructing him in the importance of pursuing a life shaped by God's Word. Earlier in this chapter, Paul instructs Timothy to hold fast to the faith that had been entrusted to him by being sure not to look or live like the world. And he reminds him, faithfulness to Jesus will often put us at odds with the world. And Paul ends this chapter by calling Timothy to live a distinctive life. He knew it wouldn't be easy. I mean, Paul himself had been criticized. He had been persecuted for being faithful to the narrow path of following Jesus Christ. And he warned Timothy things would more than likely go from bad to worse. But he encouraged him to hold on to what he had been taught, to remain true to the teaching of the Scripture, remembering the examples of those who had taught him. In the very first chapter of Timothy, we read about his grandmother named Lois and his mother named Eunice, and they had taught him the Scriptures from the time he was just a, a toddler. They taught him all through his childhood. And then we read about Paul. Paul was involved in his discipling. Timothy had been taught and discipled in the way he should go. He knew the message, which leads me to a couple questions. First, who is discipling you? Who is it that you're going side by side and life on life and, and discipling one another? I find that you, real growth happens when you have someone that you're being discipled by. And that leads me into the second question. Who are you discipling? Who is in your life that you're walking side by side with, someone who's younger in the faith, and discipling them? And the best part about that one is not only are they growing in their faith because they're being discipled, but you grow in the faith because you're discipling them. It's my experience that both of these questions lead to tremendous growth. Well, Paul ends this chapter with an affirmation of the Bible and a powerful description of what the Bible can be used for and produced in our lives. I'm going to reread that passage that Don read to us from another version. And he goes, All Scripture is God-breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man, the person of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible is the most powerful tool that we have. It can teach us how to live, but all too often we don't even crack it open. Samuel Clemens better known as Mark Twain, once called the Bible a classic. He said the Bible is a classic, a book which people praise but never read. Americans spend, on average, $2.5 billion a year on Bibles and Bible material. There's never been a time in the Western world when the Bible has not been more accessible. But perhaps for the first time in history, the Christian community is attempting a faith that is separated from the Word. People today, even in the church, desire a Bible without reference to God. 
Others teach a faith that has little or no instruction about the truth found in the Bible. Attempting to be Christian without the Bible is no different than trying to build up a muscle without exercising. Yet, this reality, this is a reality today. I see it around us all the time. There's people I would call Bibleish Christians. Christians who know just about enough about the Bible to be dangerous. The Bible has been diminished and called irrelevant. And irrelevant uh, here's a word I have a problem with. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Just keep working on these words. It's possible to strip it down, twist it, misread it, add to it, supplement, or even overrule it. And unfortunately, people who sit in the pews most of the time don't catch it because they're not aware of it. The prophecy of Isaiah is real and present danger. Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 5.20, he said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We are living in a day of heresy. Being proclaimed from every church pulpit and twisting in our culture, and the average Christian isn't even aware of it because they don't know their Bible well enough. My wife and I have sat in worship services, and every once in a while she'll look at me or I'll look at her and we'll say, something's not quite right here. More often than not, we turn to each other and we know what's not right or not. <laughs> the result is an expression of Christianity, best defined as Biblish. It's kind of, sort of, somewhat a form of religion, but it lacks the power. How's your life being shaped by God's Word? The Christian faith, as contained in the Scriptures and revealed in Jesus, is relevant but only to the extent that we're rooted in the Bible. And this leads me to a parting question. What would it look like for you to be taken, for you to take the Bible seriously? Now, as a pastor, I dearly love my sheep. I urge you to pursue a life shaped by God's Word just as Paul did to Timothy. And I promised to do all I can to help. If you have a problem, come to me. We'll talk about it. And now we have a song. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me save that thou art thou my best thou art by day or by night waking or sleeping thy presence my life be thou my wisdom and thou my true word I ever Let's bow our heads. Oh God in heaven, help us to get back into your word. Help us to know and saturate ourselves with the truth. Then we will be not so easily fooled into something that's less than your best. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Now grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Christ his Lord. According to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Amen.